What is it? Two. Two. So what is our best answer? B. B. Very good. Mark it. Move on. Okay. Uh, and then finally, uh, number five. Which of the following statements is consistent with the incorrect conclu in conclusion that HCl is an ionic compound? Okay. Uh, I would just use elimination here. So now, anytime I come to a complex question, I always rephrase it to simplify it and make sure I understand it. So they're basically asking, which of the following statements defends the incorrect idea that hydrochloric acid is ionic? Okay, so which of these defends that incorrect idea? Okay, that, okay. So it is a gas at room temperature. Okay, so what did I say about a gas at room temperature? I said it has very low intermolecular attraction. But I said ionic compounds have very high intermolecular attraction. So if it's a gas, that means it's, that's, that's wrong. That's not going to defend that HCl is ionic, right? Let's mark that off. A one molar solution freezes below uh, zero. Okay, so if it freezes below zero, that's, uh, that's melting point. So at room temperature, it's going to exist as a, if we're going above melting point, it exists as a solid, right? Um, Exist, yeah, it exists as a solid, right? Ooh. Wait, if we're above, okay, so the melting point is zero degrees, and we're at 50 degrees, that means we are, we are a liquid, right? Okay, we are a liquid. So, uh, a one molar, so that basically the solution's a liquid, so HCl is, a, if it's a liquid in room temperature, that tells us it has some intermolecular attraction, but we already learned that ionics are solid, so that's wrong, right? Okay, mark that off. One molar solution conducts electricity, we said ionic will dissolve in a solution and it will conduct electricity because of those moving ions, right? That's pretty good, right? Okay. I'll just look at the, anytime I use elimination, I always evaluate all the answers. So let's evaluate D. It is composed of two nonmetals. We already said two nonmetals, if they're close to each other in the periodic table, it's probably a covalent bond because their difference in electronegativity is very small. So I'm going to mark C and move on. Okay. Um, oh, shoot, we don't have answers. I got them. You have them? Yep. All right. I'm um, back here. What is the answer? I haven't looked at them yet, so just... Okay, what okay. is the answer to number one? A. A, correct. Okay, no, number two? A. Correct. Number three? D. D, correct. Number four? B. B, correct. Number five? C. C, correct. Okay. You guys understand what I do? If you understand why I say what I teach works, it, it really does work. Okay. This stuff helped me score 14 on my MCAT, and to this day I score 14s and 15s on every physical science section I take. Okay, uh, it really does work. Okay. Um, do you guys have any questions about the technique? Okay, you guys starting to, starting to get excited? I hope you guys are. I mean, this stuff you you study, you master it, you're going to dominate the most important test of your life. Are you running out of time? It's, can you guys uh, do one more passage, or can we can we do all two two more passages? If you need to go, uh, you're you're more than free to go. But I want to do a biological science passage with you, and I want to do a verbal because the verbal is that's the one I, I want to really show you um, to show you how that works. Okay. Um, so let, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's actually do let's do the biological science first, and uh, and we'll just uh, we'll just finish up the sciences and do verbal at the end. Okay. So I have uh, passage three. Uh, Passage three, okay, from test ten R, okay. So, oh, this looks, this is a, this is one with experiments, okay. So basically, this is they're going to present an advanced topic in biological sciences, and we're just going to use our fu our fundamental understanding to figure out what's happening in their experiment, okay. Um, okay, uh, in spring 1993 in the U.S. Southwest. Uh, physicians in rural areas began seeing patients with severe breathing problems. Okay, so now we're talking about the respiratory system. It's a big part of my course. Okay, and you're going to have to learn everything about it. You know, how the lung functions, how we breathe, that negative pressure breathing, um, the structure of the lungs, the bronchi, bronchi, everything. Okay, these previously healthy people had flu-like symptoms, aches and pains lasting several days. Okay. So flu and influenza is a virus. Okay, that's something you learn in biology. Um, viruses, you'll, you'll learn all about them. Okay. Um, now, okay. So aches and pains. Uh, probably there's some reaction to your muscles and your joints. 
and maybe there's lactic acid buildup in your muscles, you know, maybe you're not getting enough oxygenation to your muscles, creating lactic acid buildup, a lot of different things that can happen. Okay, I could go on and on and on, but there's not, it's just too general of a, of a concept. Okay. So they rapidly developed difficult breathing, were hospitalized, and were put on respirators. Okay. So this was a rapid, rapid disease, um, probably something, something with their lung function. Okay. And something to do is, you know, they're not getting enough oxygen to their lungs for some reason. Okay. Um, and, okay. So they, they need something else to help them breathe, to help their lungs expand and relax for breathing. Okay, because they need a respirator. If treated, if treated soon enough, the patient survived. Okay. Pulmonary function followed patterns similar to those shown in figure one. Okay. So I look at... Uh, so now I'll look at figure one, kind of figure out what's happening. Um, on the y-axis, I always look at the y and x-axis first. The y-axis, it shows us a global score of pulmonary function. Okay, so that's basically a level of how much their lungs will will contract. I'm sorry, rela uh, rela uh, will expand and then contract. Okay, how well your lung functions. Okay, um, and it's on a scale of zero to 450. Now the x-axis is the days of illness. Okay, so they really just show uh, three patients. Three, those three different lines, and it, for each of them, it shows that it's a rapid onset. Their their lung function really deteriorates in like the first, you know, two to two to five days. And each person's is a little different time that it deteriorates, but two to five days, the very beginning, is when their lung, the pulmonary function, really deteriorates. Okay, um, and if, if, if your lung function deteriorates, you're not going to get enough oxygen into your bloodstream to circulate around for cellular respiration. Okay. You're not going to be able to remove enough CO2, you know, to, to remove all that waste product of, of cellular metabolism. Okay. Now, uh, if, but if they were treated, then their pulmonary function increases. Okay. Those who treated the patients did not get sick. Okay. Most people will read that sentence and whatever. It's just some detail. Okay. That's a very important uh, statement. Okay. What that tells me is this is not a contagious disease. Okay, meaning those pe those those patients were you know, even if they're coughing, the doctors, yeah, the doctors who treated the patients didn't get the disease, which meant that it's probably not, it's not some bacteria that the, the patient's coughing out. It's not some virus that the patient's coughing out in their phlegm. Okay, um, it probably isn't a pathogen causing this disease. Otherwise, it would probably be contagious. Okay, unless it's strictly the the pathogen strictly remained in the bloodstream and didn't really go into your lungs. You guys understand that? So there, every statement on the MCAT passage has information. It's your job to master the fundamentals and really think back to all that stuff. Okay. Uh, the outbreak subsided by winter 1993. Okay, so it was a quick onset um, and it, the, the patients recovered. Okay, so if you look at that table, they recovered uh, upon treatment. And everyone, all three of those patients they showed recovered you know, by day seven to day ten, okay? And it was a pretty quick recovery, so whatever treatment they got was quick, okay? Now, fig under figure one, it says uh, pulmonary function, each solid line represents a global scar. Okay, we, already, we already know all that stuff, okay? Um, okay, uh, next, uh, these experiments were run to identify the pathogen. Okay, so now they're talking about the pathogen, which, which I kind of started to anticipate, right? Okay, so experiment one, Patient sera, okay, that's, you'll, you'll find out that's just your blood, okay. Patient sera were mixed with known pathogenic viruses and bacteria, okay, which I both anticipated. A positive immunological reaction was seen with a hantavirus that causes kidney disease, okay. So a positive immunological, that just means your, your, that the, the patient's it, uh, immune system reacted. And started, you know, the B lymphocytes, the T lymphocytes, memory cells, plasma cells, all that good stuff, your granulocytes, which you'll learn in this course, they all activated, the, you know, looking for that uh, hantavirus, okay, which causes kidney disease, okay. Um, okay. Now, experiment two synthesized gene sequences from two known hantaviruses were mixed with nucleic acid, okay, so synthesized gene sequences from two known antiviruses were mixed with nucleic acid from patients' lung tissues, but not with lung tissue from control subjects. Okay, so now I'm talking about taking a known sequence, okay, which you